Hello and welcome to the Entertainment Gig Podcast and Music Edition, episode number seven. My name is Cleon. On this week's episode, we show fond appreciation for Phil Chess, Bobby V, and Pete Burns. We discuss in topics the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominations, and we make a case for putting Pearl Jam into the Rock Hall, even though we really don't need to. Okay, the big news for the week is something we're actually going to save for the topic section, and that is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominations for this year, which got released uh, last Tuesday, actually. As far as the rest of the music news goes, though, Bob Dylan last week was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature, which took a lot of people by surprise, including some of the committee members. Apparently now, some of those same committee members are complaining about the fact that Bob Dylan has not actually contacted them in regards to the award. The committee members were trying to get a hold of Bob so that they could let him know formally that he received the award and to give him details on the ceremony that they're going to have for him and all the other Nobel Prize winners, but he has not responded or even attempted to respond. To which, one of the committee members responding. My personal feeling, Bob Dylan's kind of above the whole award thing, so it's not really for him as far as how he thinks. That's my thought. And he really just doesn't want it. He'd rather just move on with his life and do what he does. At least that's my thinking on the issue. In other news, MTV's president has resigned less than a year after taking the helm of the network. A few weeks or so ago, I made mention of the fact that MTV needs to change direction and become more of a music channel again in terms of their programming as opposed to whatever it is right now, which is reality TV and Teen Wolf. My thought is that maybe the next president will actually guide the ship in that direction and turn it more in, into a music hub. Here's hoping, at least. On the men this week is Mick Jagger from Laryngitis. Had to cancel a few of the Rolling Stone shows. Here's hoping he feels much better soon. Now... In terms of appreciation this week, we are going to pour a little out for our homies, three of them. Three of them you may or may not have heard of. One of them I guarantee you haven't heard of, and the other two you have heard of, although you didn't know it. First, appreciation goes to 60s pop idol Bobby V, who passed away this past week. He sang the song, Take Good Care of My Baby. Unless you're of a certain age, you probably haven't heard of him, but he was the Justin Bieber of his era. Think of it that way. One, you probably haven't heard of, except for his last name, and unless you're a big blues aficionado, Phil Chess, who was co-founder with his brother of Chess Records, passed away at the age of 95. Chess Records was the big Chicago blues record label. He was responsible for signing and producing Muddy Waters, Bo Diddley, Etta James, Willie Dixon, Howlin' Wolf, and Chuck Berry, among many, many others. The man was a giant in the field of recording and record labels, and this is a giant loss in terms of the history of rock and roll and the blues because as we all know rock and roll came from the blues so huge loss there and the final one is Pete Burns who was the and is actually or until he passed away the lead singer of the band Dead or Alive 
Now, you may not remember Dead or Alive. They were an 80s synth pop dance band. But I guarantee you, you know their biggest hit, which is you spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. You've had it on blast for decades now. Pete Burns just passed away the other day. He will be greatly missed at the very least for that song that you can't get out of your head. And you're welcome. Okay, let's discuss the big news of the week. Now, if you've been listening for the last few weeks, you notice that one of my segments that I always do is I make a case for an artist to finally get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, apparently, somebody over at The Rock has been listening because most of those artists are actually now on the nominations list for this year's Rock and Roll Hall of Fames. The official list, in alphabetical order, not in terms of popularity, as far as performers go, your nominees for this year are Bad Brains, Shaka Khan, Sheik, Depeche Mode, Electric Light Orchestra, The Jay Giles Band, James Addiction, Janet Jackson, Joan Baez, Joe Tex, Journey, Kraftwerk, MC5, Pearl Jam, Stephen Wolf, The Cars, The Zombies, Tupac Shakur, and Yes. Now, out of all those bands, the ones that I have been talking about were Sheik, Depeche Mode, Janet Jackson, and yes, the other ones that I did not manage to get through were Nine Inch Nails, which I don't know why they snubbed them, but there were a lot of snubs this year that they could have put in. LL Cool J got snubbed again. The Cure were snubbed. Bon Jovi were snubbed. The Specials were snubbed. Eurythmics, Soundgarden, Moody Blues, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, and the list goes on and on. I realize you can only have so many going into the hall, but I, I'm going to leave at least part of this discussion for next week, um, especially one band who I love, but honestly I don't think should be on this list. We'll discuss it next week. In any event, you can actually vote in terms of who gets in and makes the final cut. They're going to cut the list down to 10. So if you go to vote.rockhall.com, once a day you can vote for five artists to get in. And the vote will close on December 5th. So vote once a day vote for your favorite five artists to get in and after December 5th they're going to make the final cut down from 19 to 10 artists I'm not quite sure who I would give my vote to every single day I will say that the lock as far as I'm concerned is going to be Pearl Jam mainly because of the fact that they're part of the four horsemen of the grunge era along with Nirvana and since Nirvana made it a couple years ago Pearl Jam should be a lock to get in on this list uh, you could pretty much put anybody in they're all deserving except you know I'm actually going to talk about the one band that I don't think really belongs on this list actually two uh, Bad Brains Bad Brains I don't think is rock hall worthy as it's kind of iffy I know that they were big in in the black punk scene and full disclosure my cousin actually dated 
the lead singer of Bad Brains way back in the day. I uh, think the relationship actually ha- was around for a while. I'm not quite sure how it ended per se, but in any event, that's my personal connection to Bad Brains. Having said all that, though, it doesn't weigh into the factor one way or the other whether they should be in. I just don't think that they, as good as they were, they were that influential in terms of overall music. Now, in terms of bands who influenced other black artists to step out of the R&B and the, and the rap mainstream and to go more like, say, Lenny Kravitz or something like that, then yes, you could state the argument for them. I just don't know, compared to everybody else on this list, whether they're actually going to get in. They may get my vote one of those days, but compared to everybody else, uh, I'm not quite sure they make the cut. The other group that I don't think really belongs on here was Journey. Full disclosure, I have seen Journey. I saw them on the Raised on Radio Tour. I have collected virtually every Journey album that there is. I think they're an incredible band. I love them to death. However, they're more of the corporate rock era. And corporate rock really was kind of frowned upon. Uh, ELO could be considered corporate rock, but they were a little bit more inventive in terms of their style, so you could easily make the case for ELO to be in. Um, Tupac Shakur, I know that there's going to be a big argument about rap being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and we're actually going to discuss that next week, because that's its own topic. Um, But I'm happy to see that yes got a nomination. I'm happy to see that Janet Jackson got a nomination. I think, however, that putting Janet Jackson up against Shaka Khan on the same list may cancel those two out because both of them are very deserving. Uh, But I think it's not going to be both of them. And I'm not quite sure how The Rock's going to uh, vote on it overall. Probably Shaka Khan because she was part of Rufus. Maybe. Um, Jane's Addiction should get in, I think. I would put them in automatically. Pearl Jam, yeah, you have to. Stephen Wolf, yes. Um, the Cars, love them. Not sure if they make the cut, though. Depeche Mode better get in. Sheik better get in. Um, Jay Giles Band, I'm not quite sure as much as I love them and they are a Boston band and me being from Massachusetts uh, I have a soft spot for both the Cars and the Jay Giles band to get in since they're both from Massachusetts Um, but I'm not quite sure if the Rock Hall is going to vote them you have to remember one thing about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame committee members a lot of them are older And a lot of them like their old school rock from the 60s and the 70s and the 50s. And that's why a lot of these 80s bands really haven't made an impact uh, as of yet in the Rock Hall. Because they're trying to get all the older bands in first. That's the way I, I think that they're going about it. I'm not sure, but that's just my guess. Um, so in any event... We'll discuss more next week with the nominations. But again, if you want to vote on them, you can do it once a day at vote.rockhall.com. That's vote.rockhall.com. And voting will end on December 5th. So vote for your favorite five every day. It's not a huge part of the overall list cut, But much like the vote in, say, the Major League Baseball All-Star Game, it is at least a decent chunk as to who gets in. So vote once a day and vote often. Okay, speaking of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominations, there is one on here 
that I'm going to make a case for, even though I think that they're going to be a lock. But I know that there are a lot of haters out there, so I'm going to explain to you why they should be a lock. Now, to reiterate, from the list of the nominations, the first thing you could tell is that, for performer-wise at least, all of these albums, or all of these artists, had their first major label debut at least 25 years ago. Pearl Jam, 25 years ago, came out with the classic 10, which had the song Jeremy on it, and etc., etc. And they've been going strong ever since. They put out fresh material at least every other year or so. They go on tour like crazy. They just, actually, they're still in the middle of doing tours. I think they're going to go overseas at this point. My point is this, 25 years and they're still going strong and still putting out new albums. As I said earlier, they're one of the four horsemen of grunge. So if you're going to put Nirvana in, you have to put Pearl Jam in, even though you may think that Nirvana is cooler. I would consider Nirvana and Pearl Jam more in terms of the Beatles, say Nirvana would be John Lennon, Pearl Jam would be Paul McCartney, John Lennon being cooler in most people's eyes, but Paul McCartney still being around and still being relevant. That's Pearl Jam. The other two of the Four Horsemen, it kind of upsets me that Soundgarden has not been nominated because they're just as important as the other two, and also that Alice in Chains hasn't been nominated, but... I don't think they're eligible yet. I think Alice in Chains still has another year to go before they're eligible. But Soundgarden's eligible, and those guys should be in. Those four bands eventually should be in because they defined the 90s sound, hands down. Those are, if you're going to do a Mount Rushmore of 90s music, those are the four that you're putting up there because grunge ruled the 90s. Pearl Jam is extremely important in that vein. They have influenced a myriad of acts and still continue to influence a myriad of acts. And they still put out fresh music, which is why, haters aside, Pearl Jam should be your lock this year for induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Okay, the quick hit album review for this week is going to be the new one from Lady Gaga. Now, full disclosure, I actually own all of the Lady Gaga albums, of which there have been four pop albums, there have been six albums total if you're counting the one with Tony Bennett, and the very Gaga Holiday which was a Christmas album, more like an EP that she put out a few years back. Uh, also, full disclosure, the only reason why I own all of them is because I bought them, most of them, on the first week when they were selling them for a buck on Amazon. Or in one case, I think they were selling them for a penny. There was one album, I think, Born This Way. They were actually selling for a penny for one day. So I bought it figure for a penny you at least get a decent song out of the deal in any event the reason why I'm actually reviewing this album isn't because I'm a big Gaga fan because I respect the hell out of her I'm not overly excited about her but I do respect the hell out of her the reason why is because everybody's gone crazy in the critics field about this album. They're giving it five stars and whatnot. So I thought I would give it a listen at least and decide for myself whether this album was worthy of all the high praise that it seems to be getting. The answer is meh. It's not a great album the way that everybody's kind of gone nuts over it. My personal feeling on that is that people have been paid to go nuts over it. Looking at you, Billboard, maybe, allegedly. Um, but it's not bad. It's not one I would absolutely buy, 
But there's a few songs on it that are actually pretty good. Uh, A.O. is a good song. Diamond Hearts a really good song. Million Reasons is a nice ballad. That'll probably be the big hit off the album. Uh, Perfect Illusion's pretty good. Uh, there's a couple of other songs on there, but overall, it's even though a lot of people say that it's great, I my personal feeling is that it's really not. It's it's a halfway decent album. Um, I may be wrong on that. It could be maybe a slow burner that maybe two months from now I'll think is the greatest album to come out of 2016. But as of right now, I would have to say don't buy it. Just get a couple of the singles that are really good and leave it at that. Okay, record store time. New releases for this upcoming week are going to be Crowbar, CRX, Empire of the Sun, Helmet, Kenny Chesney, Tovlo, and Toy. Now, because of the fact that Amazon has now started this Amazon Unlimited service for an additional $8 a month or so, I'm not going to do any Amazon Prime new releases because they're really not putting any on Amazon Prime anymore. They're shoving them over to that new unlimited service. So figure if you want to listen to a new album, it's going to be there and pay the eight bucks and that's it. Um, in terms of Google Play, the one thing I noticed this week is that there aren't any 99 cent albums like there usually are for older really good albums to kind of fill your uh, or at least to complete your collection. My thought on that is because it's probably because of the fact that we're going into the Christmas season. So maybe perhaps they're going to stop doing the 99 cents because now you're getting into the prime buying season. So I will stop doing that as well. I think starting next week, what I will probably do is promote more of the albums that are on Bandcamp. I'm still trying to decide whether I want to do an indie podcast separately and incorporate it with Bandcamp or incorporate Bandcamp into this particular podcast. Still thinking about that. However, the earworms of the week still continue, of which I have three of them that you might want to check out. All of them are indie acts. The first one is Aziza with the self-titled Aziza album, which if you like jazz, this album is for you. It's a great new release. You should check it out. Uh, if you're more into trip hop, you might want to check out Wax Taylor's new one, which is By Any Beats Necessary. Very cool album. And if you like rock albums that sound like the Go-Go's probably went nuts and did a hard rockin' type of album, then check out the one from Gurr, which is spelled G-U-R-R. -R. The album is called In My Head. It's really worth a listen to. And those are my three earworms for this week. And that is it as far as this edition of the Entertainment Geek Podcast Music Edition. I am going to start up the... East Coast band version of this within the next few weeks, I believe, provided I can get some time. I'm still trying to work out the format as to what exactly I want to do. And there's a couple other podcasts that I'm thinking of musically that I would like to try and do as well. And now that we're getting into the colder months and we'll be indoors a lot more, uh, my thought is that we will be doing those as well. So stay tuned on that. I will give you announcements as far as those go. And that is it. Have yourselves a good week. And here is the social media hype dude who's going to tell you all that stuff that we normally do at the end of these things. Have a good week, all. That is it for this week's episode. Our website is theentertainmentgig.com. Our Facebook page is at The Entertainment Gig. We are on iTunes and Google Play at The Entertainment Gig, but we are also on SoundCloud at CJBT-Productions. 
and on YouTube at CJBT Productions, which has a slideshow of my photography, which you can find on Facebook at CJBT Photography and the portfolio at cjbtproductions.zenfolio, that's Z-E-N-F-O-L-I-O dot com. And that is it. We will talk with you next week. Take care. <laughs>